The federal government recently approved a new policy on agricultural extension services towards ensuring that the country does not experience shortage of food at any time in the near future. The policy was aimed at making the practice of agriculture in the country technology-driven by supporting smallholder farmers with the necessary tools and machinery needed to boost harvest and increase yield. For effective implementation of the policy, 100,000 extension service agents were recruited last year by the Ministry of Agriculture to drive support for smallholder farmers across agricultural value chains. These agents are charged with the task of engaging rural farmers, helping them to gain clear insights of effective agricultural practices to overcome some of their challenges while also offering them agricultural extension services from time to time. The question now is, what makes this policy different from others that have been introduced before? We shall drill into the issues with our guests on this edition of Late Edition. I am Ekene Ndulwe. Thanks for joining us. Professor Mohamed Kuta Yahaya is a graduate of the University of Calabar. He obtained his master's and doctoral degrees in agricultural extension from the University of Ibadan. He started his university teaching and research career at the University of Ibadan as an assistant lecturer in 1995 and rose through the ranks to become a professor of Agricultural Extension and Development Communication at the University of Ibadan, Nigeria in 2008. Professor Yahaya is an author of over 120 scholarly publications in reputable national and international journals. He has also been a lead consultant to many national and international organizations on many global initiatives, including the World Bank, UNICEF and Development Activities International, among others, in the area of positive deployment of communication strategies to achieve development objectives. Professor Yahaya is a member of many learned and professional bodies, particularly the International Association for Media and Communication Research, Agricultural Extension Society of Nigeria, Nigeria Forum for Agricultural Advisory Services and Rural Sociological Association of Nigeria. Dr. Oyeshola Oyebanji holds a degree of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture from the University of Ife and Doctor of Philosophy, Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine, University of London. He has over 40 years' experience in teaching research extension and rural institution development, agricultural project formulation, appraisal, supervision, and impact assessment. He has undertaken consultancies in all areas of agriculture and rural development cycle in the course of his consultancy services as a development expert. He had acquired extensive experience in project coordination, entrepreneurship, develop, entrepreneurship development, rural infrastructure, livestock development, crop intensification, among others. You are welcome to the program, sir. It's a pleasure to join you on this yeah. late edition. Yes, thank you. Um, our focus of discussion today is on the new agricultural uh, policy on uh, extension services. Okay, one will wonder, why are we talking about a new policy on extension services at this point in our nation? Professor uh, Yahaya, I would like to start with you. What is um, eliciting uh, the need to have this new policy in extension services? Well, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I want to bring to your notice that uh, since 1893, when agriculture started in Nigeria, 
Nigeria has never had an agricultural extension policy. And by 1914, when the first <coughs> Department of Agriculture was established in the colony of Lagos, Nigeria is yet to have an agricultural extension policy. Unlike other developed climes that have done well in the agricultural system, particularly you talk about the United States of America that has made a mark in terms of uh, agricultural development and food security. They started with uh, an, an extension policy in 1914 which culminated into the uh, Steve Lever uh, uh, Act that established land grants for the universities and uh, extension well entrenched. And you can see what has happened to uh, agriculture in the U.S. today is a function of that. And other countries that have done well even in our African continent, when you drive home and you come to Zimbabwe, they have had an agricultural extension policy as far back as uh, uh, 2000. And um, in, in, in Malawi in 2001, Botswana, South Africa, all other countries that are doing well in the agriculture, especially Uganda, that had a policy in 2016. And uh, in 2021, of course, Uganda hosted the whole of Africa extension week. And we, Nigeria was called upon to host the next edition of the agricultural extension week which is coming up in November 2023. So for all of us in the agricultural extension system, we are beginning to get disturbed that how can you hold the whole of Africa without an agricultural extension policy? So we are very gratified that uh, President Mohamed Bari's government has broken the jinx of over you know, uh, 130 years of lack of an extension policy to have come up with a policy that is all encompassing, that is going to engender um, gender mainstreaming sustainability and all the other missing variables in the previous effort because the desire for an extension policy was that it should be a standalone policy even when the nations have their own agricultural policy because the the mistake we have made over the past in the past is that and i'm happy you have brought into the studio an experienced hand a mentor to all of us and i remember his role when a fiber agriculture uh, coordinating unit was established in Ibadan with late Professor Minjin Daddy, I was a postgraduate student working and learning from them. Professor Oibanji has been a, an institution in that directive. You realize that the, 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 the idea of making extension an appendage, even in scholarship and uh, manpower development, has always been the problem. The first faculty of agriculture in the Nigerian university system was at the University of Ibadan in 1948, and then uh, subsequently, the first Department of Agricultural Extension in the Nigeria University System was at the University of Ibadan in 1975. Before, it used to be Agricultural Economics and Extension. So that means Extension was always a, a second hand bag, but now it's a full fledged mother that is providing services in terms of manpower development across the entire agricultural value chain dealing with human beings. And then the unique aspect of this is that the mistake we make in agricultural policy is that you have different entities in agriculture. You talk about agronomy dealing with crop soil and other studies. You talk about crop protection dealing with uh, entomologists and other very uh, experts in that area. You talk about animal science dealing with animals, both ruminants and small ruminants, including cattle, sheep, goods, and poultry. Then you now talk about managing land, I mean, resources of production, land, you know, labor, and capital, which agricultural economics derive expertise. But the only unit in agriculture, you also have forestry, wildlife, ecotourism, yes. and both. But the one that deals with human beings is agricultural extension. So, and then, farming is an occupation that is human-driven, where you talk about human beings involved. So you're talking about somebody who can deal with the psychology of human beings he's dealing with, who understand the rural dynamics, who understand the sociological way of dealing with rural people, because agriculture predominantly is a, is a rural occupation. Because 75% of those who are in, involved in the agricultural system are in, in the rural areas. So you need somebody who understands their language, who understands how to deal with it, their psychology and so on. And that's why, ultimately, 
the essence of communication has come in. How to even communicate with the end user. Taking the variables into consideration. You are talking about agricultural research in various aspects of agriculture. And then translating it, interpreting it into the language of the end users. And that is why we talk about CAP analysis in agricultural extension. Because agricultural extension is dealing with K, knowledge, okay. attitude, and practices. So any attempt for you to deal with people who don't have the basic knowledge of message that you want to deliver is going to create a gap. And in the process, you influence their knowledge and their attitude, and in the process, they begin to change. And that's why you have what we call adoption process in extension. In adoption process, you have a, 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 a graph which shows that some people are early adopters, some people are late adopters, some people are laggards. They wait and see the damage that has happened to you before they take a decision. If it serves well, they'll say, okay, we're going to take it. So you have to recognize this, this different segment of the society and the human behavior. Then you now talk about only overall the adoption of your technologies, which is going to change from their maybe primitive practices or their indigenous practices that they can match with the modern practices to enhance their production. So extension is a whole gamut of, you know, institutional development. Okay. And therefore this policy is to address all the gaps because of the funding lacuna that has affected extension. Because when you look at it, the high point of extension in Nigeria history was post-oil boom era, when you have the World Bank assisted agricultural development programs. Initially it started as an enclave project in Ayagba and Kogi State, in Bida, in Niger State, and uh, Gombe. So, but this enclave project later on blossomed into 12 states, and later on 36 states were involved, all nationwide. And okay. they were driven by the World Bank. And in that period, it was the high point of extension delivery in Nigeria agricultural system. Because farmers were getting information, and they were yearning for more, and it improved Nigeria agricultural production system. Unfortunately, why this policy has come into place was sustainability was a big question. Immediately, World Bank withdrew its funding. There was the total collapse of extension system. Okay. And that is why all the stakeholders in the agricultural system came together to press for an agricultural extension policy for Nigeria so that they can save the nation for agriculture and food security issue. But I'm sure Professor Oyebaji, well, yeah, let, let, me, let me take, Professor, can, uh, can, because from, <laughs> from, from, from your opening, I can see that you are so much involved in the extension um, services. Yeah, I know when I was in primary school, we are yeah. taught about extension workers, but growing up, I stopped hearing about them. Did they disappear? What happened to extension uh, services in Nigeria? As Professor Yaya said, it's because we don't have a comprehensive agricultural extension policy. You know, when you have a system that is not driven by policy, there will not be political weight. There will not be enhanced funding. So these are the, some of the challenges we have been facing in agricultural extension system. Professor Yaya says, give a lot of background. I will just talk briefly about historical perspective. Okay. And how do we, how do we get to this point? We, are by we have a new policy now. Uh, all agricultural policy, right from its inception, recognize the importance of agricultural extension service delivery. But it's just a mere statement. Uh, this policy will strengthen agricultural extension service delivery and we will engage uh, extension agent. Uh, this how to do it is not mentioned. So we felt concerned that there's need to have a comprehensive policy that address agricultural extension. Because without agricultural extension, we cannot enhance productivity. We cannot face some of the emerging issues that is confronting Nigeria now. Climate change, yes, farmer does conflict. It's, it's because of lack of comprehensive agricultural extension policy. Uh, the journey started a long time ago. Fortunately, I've been involved in the journey. Uh, I remember 
We have been having donor assisted projects. When you look at my resume, I've been a consultant to IFAD, World Bank, yes. and Land Development yeah. Bank, and all this. So, all these agricultural development projects in Nigeria, they are extension driven. Because okay. what they are addressing is innovation, passing innovation to farmers to enhance their productivity, to raise their standard of living, to enhance their income. That is what. It's all about. So, during regular supervision mission, we continually observed that we don't really have an effective and efficient agricultural extension service delivery system. You know, as Prof has said, after the cessation of World Bank funding, because no uh, sustainability strategy was put in place, and there is no policy. That's why there's no political will from the state government. That's why there's no funding. So we now felt that there's need to have an extension policy. In one of the projects doing supervision uh, is World Bank uh, Assisted West Africa Agricultural Productivity Project. It covers West African South region. They find out that in Nigeria, there's need to strengthen agricultural extension system. That a major problem why farmers are not adopting this new innovation, or why the new innovation and agricultural technologies are not getting to farmers, is because of the efficiency in our agricultural extension service delivery system. Okay. So they recommended that there's need to strengthen agricultural extension service delivery system in Nigeria. And I happen to be chairman of the committee setup. Okay. When we submitted our report, we mentioned two areas. The need to have a policy. The need to have enhanced funding. Because even when you have a policy, without enhanced funding, we don't expect all the money to come from government, private sector, farmers' organization, or contributing. Because government responsibility is huge. Yes. We cannot expect them to do everything. So we recommended sustained funding and corporate policy. The World Bank now took it. They said in West, in, in a Francophone country, they have a sustainable system of funding agricultural extension. Though, so they now recommended that the committee should visit Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. Incidentally, I was also a member of the team that visited Côte d'Ivoire to understudy what they are doing there. What they are doing there. Incidentally, they also recommended to Ghana because they observed that. It's only Nigeria, Ghana, that the extension system is not it, active. It's not active. Okay. So, in fact, in Ghana, Ghana was highly mm -hmm. represented. The Minister of Agriculture was the Minister of Finance. And all. One thing that came out clearly is that agricultural extension funding is a mm -hmm. co-financing funding by government. Farmers' organization, when I say farmers' organization, I mean commodity association. Okay. Commodity association, they have cocoa, because cocoa is their main state of the economy. They have a very strong cocoa farmers' organization. Okay. They have livestock farmers' organization. They have a poultry farmers' organization. And these organizations are well organized. They okay. mobilize resources. Okay. They identify their problem, and they support research. Okay, uh, before we go into, into the issue of funding, I would like uh, Professor Yahaya to throw more light on why we need, how um, this new policy, how can it enhance food production in Nigeria? What exactly does it bring to the table in terms of uh, food sufficiency, food uh, production? Well, as my mentor has said, it is easy to uh, accuse government of so many uh, shortcomings, but we don't introspectively look at our own challenges too. You see, the moment government come up with a policy, the issue at stake always has been implementation. This is where you see people begin to compete for the benefits, for the spoils of what they will get from it. But apparently, the focus of this policy is that it will engender availability of all that enhances production in terms of extension delivery system, qualified extensions uh, agents, 
whose qualifications will be well established, minimum of diploma in agriculture, and then they'll be con con subjected to trainings in agricultural extension. In the process, they are able to interpret research findings. For example, you will be amazed the level at which many research findings are lying fallow at many research stations. In a, in a Just left there in the drawers, not implemented, yes. Oh. In the same thing, the technologies that were supposed to drive this policy, we're not talking about giving contract to import heavy-duty tractors from India or Pakistan or other countries. We are talking about indigenous discoveries in terms of innovation, in terms of improved seeds. I can say with confidence that NCR Badegi has always been in the forefront of technology generation for rice because I'm privileged to have come from rice producing background of Niger State. And Faro 44, Faro 54 have become ecologically consistent from various agricultural ecological zones that are disease resistant, high yielding, and so on. Recently, the executive director came up to the world and they have you know, come up with a new cultivar of rice that can yield about 5 to 5.5 tons per hectare as against the traditional 1.5 or 1.2 tons per hectare. That's a great quantum leap. So what is left now is how to make these technologies available to farmers, these innovations. Especially those in the rural in the areas. Rural areas. Mm. And how do you achieve that? Because the farmers, they have what we call uh, attitudinal issues based on fear and uncertainties. You need to break those barriers. Because they are used to a practice that has given them results. That's part of the KAP you talked yeah, about. You talk about. Mm -hmm. If you want to convince them, you have to demonstrate to them that this is workable. Mm. And this is going to give you the result. But who can do that for them? It's only a special agent. In the same breath, this technology we are talking about, mechanical equipment, I will be at the forefront of everybody who cares about Nigerian technology development. Should go to Nigeria Center for Agricultural Mechanization in Lori. They have developed small prototype equipment that can ease product, I mean, cultivation system, harvesting system, and so on, but they're lying fallow. Nobody is available in the industry to take it up, to replicate, multiply, and make available to Nigerian farmers. And what Prof is saying, okay. let me give you some essential elements of the po uh, policy. What he's saying, the policy document which was approved, have addressed it. Okay. Uh, formulation of this policy follow a process. Yes. It's not that we just sat down and developed something. It follows a consultative process. Uh, the policy was driven by Federal Department of Agricultural Extension and IFAD graciously because they too they are concerned. Okay. International Fund for Agricultural Development graciously provided resources to hire consultants. They hire two eminent Nigerians. Okay, consultants, consultants, yes. You know, to, prov to produce a draft policy. And this consultant went out went to all geopolitical zone, work with uh, every street stakeholders on all actors along the value chain to, to find out what are the what are the problems confronting agricultural extension service delivery system. Why are you not assessing the technology? Research institutes have developed a lot of technology as Prof has said. Why are we not assessing it? This, it was quite uh, participatory and inclusive. Okay. Based on the outcome, they came up with a draft. And the draft was also subjected to national stakeholder workshop. Let everybody or that people see private sector, public sector, all this. They also made their own contribution before the final draft now came in. Then when the final draft came in, the ministry felt that it has to be put in a kind of policy framework. Okay. You know, so as to guide the government, because when they want to legislate, there must be a framework, you know, to work with. To work with. Yes. So we came back. I was also involved in all the process. We came back, and also 
identify the overall objective of the policy as well as the specific objective. From the specific objective, we identify 11 specific objectives. Okay. If for each of the objectives, we made a policy statement and strategy. Can you briefly tell us um, maybe a few of the objectives? The, the, the issue of the objective is strengthening the linkage between research, extension, pharma, input, and markets. Okay. Another policy uh, statement is human resources development. That is, there is need to develop the capacity of all the extension agents. We need to give them enabling tools. You know, there is another objective on uh, youth and women empowerment. So that gender mainstreaming. Okay. Mainstream. The objective also has uh, address all the emerging issues like Especially climate, ad like climate, climate adaptation, change, yes. climate adaptation uh, conflict resolution, yeah. because all these are embracing agriculture and all this. So these are the, the these are the policy statements made, and then strategy for enhanced funding. We were we were very impressed about how the third fund operates. Okay. We felt that there should be some source of funding for you to, to, to have a section to, to be able to fund agricultural extension service. Okay. It will be contribution from everybody and all these things. So these are some of the uh, these are some of Object the objectives. objectives. Yes. Yeah. You know, okay. Because we believe that from some of these objectives so certain aspect of it can be pulled out and legislation passed on it. All especially right. with respect to enhanced funding, that is very important. Especially with respect to regarding extension, setting up a professional body. Okay. Because everybody regard the extension is just like the Koran. You cannot go and practice. <laughs> to you have to be duly qualified. You have to be duly qualified. Yes. So okay. we recommended the establishment of a professional organization. Okay. That will regulate and certify extension service delivery. Okay. Because public sector carry out extension service, right. private sector carry out, NGO carry out, but the messages can be distorted. You know? But when we have a professional body, there will be a clearing house to harmonize all the technology and innovations. Yes. And some of them are ecologically specific. You okay. get what I mean? Yes. What to the, 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 the requirement for rice production in Southwest may be different from in North Central, may be different from the North East and all these things. Okay. So we want an harmonized agricultural extension technology and innovation that okay. will be accessible to farmers. Okay. Um, uh, Prof, um, we'd like to know, we understand that this uh, policy has been approved by the federal government. At what stage are you uh, with the policy right now? Well, the, the good news is that uh, on the 12th of uh, April, the Fair Executive Council and uh, the current administration of President Mohamed Buhari uh, took the memo by the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Dr. Uh, Mamouda, uh, who presented it at the Federal Executive Council. It was thoroughly debated, and the information available to all of us was that it was clearly available to all, just like yourself, that when you were growing up, that what happened? Everybody felt the extension was missing. And it was a timely intervention by the Federal Minister of Agriculture to have brought that uh, memo to council. And it was unanimously approved and adopted. And the Federal Minister of Agriculture is in the position of the approved uh, uh, document now and waiting for uh, mass you know, uh, mobilization to, for everybody in the Nigerian agricultural system to key into it. And we are very happy with the NTA for taking the lead in the mobilization <coughs> of Nigerian stakeholders to create sensitization and awareness about this policy. And I'm glad to report that uh, in no distant time, there will be more stakeholders consultation in terms of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, 
access to information and the content. So I'm very happy to note that. States who either to have always operated on their own <coughs> oh, Sorry. would take yeah. a cue from the uh, policy because it's all impressive. It has provision for the collaboration between the federal, state and local governments. We have been able to come up with an institutional framework for the operation and management of agricultural extension service delivery system in Nigeria both at the federal level, state level, local government level, as well as the community level. And the roles and responsibility of each tier of government have been spelled out. Spelled out. Okay. Because once you have an institutional framework, the buy-in will be very easy. Then secondly, we have also developed a mechanism for monitoring and evaluation. That is, there are, there are so many strategic approaches to extension. It's not one fit all. You have so many strategies. What you are going to do for crops will be different from livestock, will be different from processing, will be different from marketing, because okay. all of them has their own innovation and technology. You know, So we have developed a mechanism for monitoring and evaluation. And periodically, we'll be assessing the impact. You know, Because you can't put in place a policy without monitoring, yes. without assessing impact. Is it effective? What type of modification can we make and all these things? So, as Prof has said, it's a very all-inclusive uh, policy. And we are extremely glad and excited that at long last, the federal government of Nigeria has approved a comprehensive agricultural extension service policy. Okay, um, we'll now take a short break. You are watching Late Edition on NTA News 24. The program continues shortly. Let's blow your trumpets. Advertise on NTA News 24, located at the headquarters premises of the NTA, Area 11, Pemki, Abuja. Our rates are affordable. Our reach is far and wide. News and more news. If you are just joining us, the program is late edition and we have been discussing the new agri extension policy, food security and agri production. My guests in the studio have been Professor Mohamed Kuta Yahaya and Dr. Oyeshola Oyebanji, both experts in agriculture. All right, um, Doc, yeah. let's uh, continue from where we stopped. Okay. You know, we've always heard about policies, 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 with the problem being implementation. So many policies in Nigeria, like you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen to this one that will be different from all the other policies that we, we've had in the past. How are you make, going to make sure that this policy works and not end up in the drawers like others we've had? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, when you. When you look at the policy document, for each policy statement, we have recommended, we have put in place implementation strategy. That is very important. Some of these policy occasionally we forget the implementation strategy, implementation arrangement. How can we be able to effect the policy? Then, not only that, this policy has been backed up by institutional framework. You know, I mentioned yes, it institutional is. framework. At the federal level, there's going to be a committee, you know, that is responsible for overseeing the operation and management of extension both at the federal level, at the state level, at the local government level, and at the community level. And we have recommended that in order to have political will, the state gov governors at the state they level, need because to they are the in. most critical, yes. you know, they are the one having the farmers. Federal government is just providing policy framework for agriculture to thrive, you know. So once there's political will from government, then the implementation will be very easy. So okay. we recognize that there should be an oversight committee whereby they will approve 
the work plan and budget for agricultural extension service delivery system at the state level. And at the state level, we also have, each state has its own agricultural extension service delivery agency. And this is agricultural development projects, which Prof has mentioned. Yes. It was set up by the, uh, by the World Bank. And it's the, all of them, they, they are set up and they, 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 are, uh, they are legislated, they, they are backed up by legislation, so they are functional. They are, they are an entity recognized by government. Uh -huh. So they are the essential service delivery system. So they are supposed, they will work in conjunction with the ministry to provide agricultural extension service delivery work plan. What type of support are going to give? They are going to give to farmers. Okay. What are the problems? Which are the problems that are supposed to be focused upon? And we also expect that when they are doing their monitoring, they should be able to bring feedback, because farmers will definitely have problems. You cannot solve all the farmers' problems. New problems continue to emerge. So this problem will not. Be That's why there is need for monitoring and yeah, evaluation. evaluation. Yes. So this problem cannot be feedback to the research institute. You know, the institutional framework also involves both the public, private sector, research institute, NGO. And okay. all of them to are members of this committee. So once you have an implementation committee, I can assure you the, 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 the sustainability of that policy is assured. Okay. But in most cases, you don't have implementation committee. And that implementation committee must be functional. If, you know, functionality is also very to bridge important. that gap. Yeah, to bridge that gap, okay. and we have sat do the responsibility of ensuring this uh, regular meeting to the ADP Agricultural Development Project at the state level because they are the secretariat. They are the one who goes around collate and prepare the work plan and budget. So government will approve it. It will go into their annual budget and all oh. this thing. Then, when we are also talking about enhanced funding at the national level, okay. you know, I told you that we recommended having agricultural extension uh, trust fund. Although people are feeling that, well, why can't we have only one fund for oh. agriculture, okay. rather than having a separate fund for extension. But we are saying that even if you don't have a separate trust fund for extension, under the umbrella of agricultural Funding. Uh, funding, agricultural funding. We can have a section dedicated, for, dedicated to extension okay. and still establish this trust fund. It has you to be okay. you know, so, so all the resources provided for agricultural extension will go into that trust fund. And we have recommended that they should set up a, a board of trustees to manage that fund. And we have also recommended the source of funding. You know, so this one will take care of national issue, just like educational trust fund. It take okay. care of issues that confront agricultural development and educational development and all these things. So we are put in place that one. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, Prof, uh, let's come back to you. We understand that um, as at last year, about 100,000 extension agents we are recruited. The of Africa. Okay, under what are is it part of the 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 policy? Is it part, where are they now? How is the spread? Well, the you know when the president came into office in 2015, the member is aware he expressed a lot of concern about the, the state of extension in Nigeria that uh, he grew up to understand extension and to relate and to feel the impulse of the activities of people like Baba Larry, the popular radio program, and the activities of NRLS Abusaria that provide services in terms of both uh, uh, media and uh, pamphlets. In fact, those pamphlets were very popular for what you call Ajemi, where you have the routine in uh, Arabic uh, uh, content, but the, the, the interpretation is now, sir. Okay. So when you are reading it, you can, those who are not literate in the Western form of education will use their Quranic uh, knowledge or uh, exposure. To, to understand, it. yes. And to understand. So it's just like the same thing in Nigerian currency, where you see the right inscription, 20 Naira, Naira, I'm seeing, Naira, Shirin. 
15 naira. Naira, I'm seeing the description is in a Jemi. Okay. Yeah, many people who don't understand would think it's uh, Islamic, it's, it's, mm. it's a language of communication. So we believe that uh, uh, this extension agent is out of the present desire to address unemployment and to deploy the young people and direct their energies towards agriculture to provide extension services. So they were trained. And I know some of the uh, associations of agricultural extension in Nigeria, particularly the Nigerian Forum for Agricultural Advisory Services, where I am currently the public communications advisor, and the Agricultural Extension Society of Nigeria and Rural Sociological Association of Nigeria provided the manpower training for these recruits okay. and gave them some weeks of training across these geopolitical zones. So they will be now. They will now be deployed to those geopolitical zones where they can provide extension services. So I'm very comfortable that this will add to the number of existing extension agents. And before you know it, those who were recruited by the World Bank in the 80s, majority of them have retired. Some of them, they, so you see the gap of extension agent in Nigeria is a serious problem. The FO recommendation is one extension agent to 800 uh, farmers, but what we have currently is that we are talking about one extension agent to 25,000 farmers, which is very, very cumbersome and tedious for a one person to handle. So we know that with this number injected, it will increase the service delivery by extension but, agent. But, but still, there is still a huge shortfall, a huge even with shortfall. the 100,000 uh, recruitment. In, in, in fact, my own advocacy is that the incoming government should look inward instead of young people aspiring to run away from nigeria they many of them graduate they can be converted yeah, but like, but talking about that you know that many young people these days we have our population about 60 percent of nigeria's population yeah. are people under the age of 30 yeah. but many are not interested in agriculture because it's not attractive yeah. you know how can Governments make it attractive. Does this policy address that issue? That is where technology is going to help. Because we cannot make progress and make attract agriculture attractive through holes and cortices. It's unaccepted. It's, it's, it's primitive. It's labor intensive. Even in our universities where we organize practical for students, they still operate based on holes and cortices. Some of us are very, very averse to that kind of uh, practice. We are talking about bringing small technologies where young people can even have a feel about these technologies themselves. Let them feel that with these technologies they can perform and they will be happy doing that. And you know, majority of the students who read agriculture in Nigeria university systems now, I call them conscripts because they would apply to read medicine, pharmacy, engineering. But because of the limited quarters, they will be sent to a Greek, even also the city, a Greek and vet medicine. So you realize that many of them are just they are not interested in. Interested. They so just want to get the degree and, and leave. And, mm -hmm. and that. So what has happened to Nigerian curriculum now in agriculture is the concept of entrepreneurship education. That is going to change the landscape of agriculture, mm -hmm. and I can tell you confidently. Many of our students, I know at the University of Ibada, many of our students are entrepreneurs. Even as postgraduate students, they sponsor themselves based on their own private, you know, sector engagement. Some of them are into poultry farming. Some of them are into fisheries production. Some of them are into uh, crafts that are unbelievable. But the biggest you know, attraction today is the information and communication technology. Some of them are technology savvy. Some of them are ICT wizards, as I'm talking to you. So they are very relevant in every sector of the Nigerian economy now, unlike in the past, where you say somebody because you read agronomy, you would only be able to, you know, practice in, in that area. Many of them mm. are now diversified and they are now working in tandem with the new principles of value chain development in agriculture through all the as he said as my yoga said you can look at it from the production point of view 
from the processing point of view, from, you know, if value addition in terms of uh, branding, in terms of marketing, even in terms of consumer education, mm -hmm. and even the use of apps. One of my students did a research study recently investigating agribusinesses in the matter. Mm -hmm. And it was exciting that many of these agribusinesses are into agri-technologies applications okay. in their own enterprise. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised that in the near past, Many of these things were not there before. So you can become a consultant, even providing this uh, 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 service. Even a service provider. A service provider. Has, has oh. so, so, so I think it's exciting that the new trend, and I'm happy the National University Commission is, is blessing the trend as in other clubs. Okay. If I recently am penciled down to go for uh, one of the uh, resource assessment in one of the universities in the South-South, to look at their uh, entrepreneurial education in agriculture. So okay. for me, it's like the, 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 there is a paradigm shift. It's no longer what many people thought is you have to swell yourself before okay. you can make it. Okay. You can become part of the new Let, let, let me get uh, Dr. Oyebanji's yeah. thoughts on yeah. the issue of bridging this gap. Yeah. One extension service worker to 800, that's the FAO recommendation. We have a huge shortfall from what Prof said, one to 25,000 farmers. How do we bridge this gap? You know, by, we know that our population are mainly uh, the young people. So how do you go about this? Um, as Prof has said, you know, this policy address agricultural, agriculture from the value chain. You know, what many people don't understand is that there are so many agricultural business along the value chain which are youth, when they are empowered, they are trained, they can provide, they can serve as a service provider to the farmers itself. You know, he was talking about mechanization. Most of the farmers may not be able to, you know, either assess the uh, machinery or be able to even utilize it to do their cultivation and all this. In some of the projects which we have supervised, they have been training youths on agri-business enterprises along the production segment, processing segment, marketing segment. When I say production segment, you have those people who go into core production. You have those people who go to service provider, providing mechanization services, using having their home machinery, like tractor hiring services. You can engage on it. We are training you to engage on it. Some they can also provide pest control services. You know, we don't want farmers to do manual uh, weed uh, control and all these things. Okay. You know, some youth have been trained as pest control services. They earn their living and they make money. Some of them even become input dealer. Input dealer is still part of agriculture. Our youth can go into it okay. without necessarily going to till ground. When you talk about livestock production, our youth can go into brooding because most of our farmers. No, I believe that bridging this gap means yeah. going to the rural yeah. rural what farmers to talk to about them. Mm. Once you have this set of critical mass of people as service provider who have been trained they can be providing service to farmers okay. without necessarily government. So, and they are increasing the, the extension service delivery. They are increasing the number of people providing extension service. Because this policy address pluralistic extension service delivery mm -hmm. involving both public as well as private sector. You know, okay. as I said, public cannot do everything. Okay, we don't have much time on our hands, but okay. before we, we wrap it up, I'd like you to, there's one objective that you mentioned, yeah. the issue of conflict uh, resolution yeah. in the extension services policy. How does this uh, particular um, objective, how does it deal with the issue of farmers' headers uh, crisis? Um, the, the, we, as we said, uh, these are cross-cutting issues in agricultural extension service delivery. Uh, the extension agents, they will be taught, they will be trained on conflict resolution, as well as conflict management. So within the community they work, 
you know, they will be trained how to set up a conflict resolution committee. You know, if they know that headers, you have headers, pastoralists, and farm court farmers, and all these things, they will be trained how to set up a conflict resolution committee that involves all the users of natural resources within the community. You know, so that they can work out a plan for them. And it reduce conflict, you know, because everybody will be involved. Traditional people will be involved. The pastoralists, their leader, you know, they all have the leader within the community. They know them. The irony of it is that the community know the pastoralists themselves. Okay. They know the core farmers. Fact, uh, the strategy to do that they will be will be the extension leader will be empowered or even if it's service provider private sector they will be empowered on it okay yes yeah. I, I think the good news is that uh, i'm also privileged sir mm -hmm. to participate uh, in a recent uh, national conference on livestock reforms and uh, conflict mitigation organized by Kano state government uh, under the leadership of uh, Governor Abdullah Danduje. Uh, Professor Tairo Jega is the chairman and I chair the technical committee on that conference. We are coming up with a blueprint that will address all the issues, including adopting the Kano model. Because Kano has a unique model, as the President just said, on engaging the traditional institutions, community leaders, and different segments of the society to provide security and peace building. And where these conflicts occur, and farmers suffer loses of livestock as a result of rustling, as a result of uh, uh, banditry and other criminal activities, there is a provision to support them in a, what we call rehabilitation and compensation mechanism so that they will stay in their occupation. So this kind of model, I'm sure by the time the blueprint has, is made public, is going to help Nigeria address this very challenging situation in our agricultural system. Not only in, in, uh, in crops, sedentary farmer clashes, but even ECOWAS protocol in addressing these transhumans and others is a comprehensive package. We have a, a, a very serious blueprint that is coming out after the conference proceeding that's so elaborate. The, 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 I'm sure the NTA will be interested in propagating further some of these findings so that you can help Nigeria build peace and mitigate conflict <coughs> and enhance occupational performance of those in those sectors in the livestock industry. Okay, um, our time has been far spent. Um, Doc, I would like you to, to, in a few seconds, wrap up your thoughts on the new uh, policy on agriculture extension services. Yeah, I'm pleading with the incoming administration uh, to follow up on the approval given in terms of the implementation. And uh, the, I'm also appealing to the Nigeria Agricultural Extension Service Society. They also have a lot of role to play okay. in terms of policy advocacy and dialogue. All right. Uh, Prof, your final thoughts? Well, my final thought is that, number one, we must appreciate the government of President Mohamed Buhari for breaking the jinx of uh, 130 years, and also to impress it on the uh, civil bureaucracy, the, the technocrats in the Federal Minister of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, to really operationalize this document so that it will be accessible and it will be available to all the stakeholders in the Nigerian agricultural system so that the agricultural extension will take its pride of place. We in the Nigerian Forum for Agricultural adversary services are taking the front seat in engaging all the stakeholders to make sure that this policy is not only impactful but change oriented. Indeed, Agriculture Extension Services has to take its pride of place. And this is late edition. We have been speaking with Professor Mohamed Kuta Yahaya, former SSG to Niger State Go Government and a Professor of Agriculture. And also in the studio, we've been speaking with Dr. Oyeshola Oyebanji, consultant agriculturists and that's our package on this episode of late edition thank you for watching i am ekene